Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have x to the power 5 plus x equals y to the power 5 plus y and x plus y equals 5. So this is a polynomial system and you can definitely use substitution. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. The first method will not be uh, concluded. I'm just going to show you the method and then we'll jump into the second one. But I'm also going to show you uh, something else in the middle. So let's go ahead and do the following. From the second equation, I can go ahead and isolate y. Right? I can basically replace y with 5 minus x. So let's go ahead and use that in the first equation, which is the top one. So I named this one first and this one second. So if you replace y with 5 minus x here and here, you get the following. x to the power 5 plus x equals y, which is 5 minus x to the power 5 plus 5 minus x. So you may be thinking, hey, x to the fifth is going to cancel out, so on and so forth, but that's not the case. It's not going to cancel out because it's going to come with a minus sign. So it'll be added, actually. So you're going to have 2x to the fifth on the left-hand side. But anyways, to keep a long story short, let's put it all together, and we're going to get the following quintic equation. 2x to the fifth minus 25x to the fourth plus 250 x to the third power minus 1250 x squared plus 3127 x which is like an interesting number minus 3130 equals zero so that's our quintic unfortunately there is no quintic formula and even if there was one if it existed it will be super duper complicated. Remember in a previous video we talked about a quartic formula I only saw you, I only showed you like a piece of the quartic formula because it just doesn't fit on the screen. All right, great. So this is the quintic and you can go ahead and try rational root theorem because there is a rational root actually. That's what we're going to get at eventually. So you're going to be basically looking at factors of 3,130 divided by factors of 2. All those combinations, and one of those at least, is going to work. Okay? And you're going to find out, even after you do all the work and all that crazy stuff, you know, that's probably going to take forever, you can, you're going to get this in factor form like this. 2x minus 5 multiplied by x to the fourth minus... 10x cubed plus 100x squared minus 375x plus 626 equals 0. And from here you can easily see that 5 halves is going to be a rational solution. What about the quartic? Again, there's a quartic formula, but I don't think you want to use it. Do you think I went through all the possible routes and tested all of them to arrive at the solution? Absolutely not. I, I use something else, which is called Wolfram Alpha. So let's go ahead and take a look at Wolfram Alpha now because it's going to show us the factors and also all the solutions. So here's Wolfram Alpha, Wolfram Alpha with uh, the solution. And you can see the input and then it simplifies it, writes it in a different, uh, couple different ways, so on and so forth. And now you can see here clearly that 5 halves is a solution. That's the only real solution. Guess what? The other solutions are all non-real complex solutions. But they are conjugate. So they kind of come in nice pairs as a quartet, whatever. Uh, so they're kind of related. Anyways, those are the results from Wolfram Alpha. So we're going to go back to the problem and do the second method. So here's the second method. So our original problem was x to the fifth plus x equals y to the fifth plus y. And we have x plus y equals 5. So for those of you who are wondering where this problem comes from, I came up with this idea. But coming up with problems like this is not too hard. When I tell you the idea behind this, hopefully you can do the same. So I didn't call it homemade, but it is homemade. Anyways, easy to come up with. So what do we do? 
instead of substituting, obviously substitution leads to a big issue uh, with the quintic, we're going to do the following. We're going to pay attention to the first equation, this one. And we're going to consider the function, the following function, uh, whose graph I'm going to show you. f of t equals t to the fifth plus t. Now, I wanted to pick a function of t because I'm going to be able to replace t with different uh, numbers like x and y. Suppose x and y are constants in this case, but of course they are variables. Uh, anyways, so here's our function, and this function I'm claiming that it's always increasing. This function is always increasing. Why? Let's look at the derivative. 5t to the 4th plus 1. And as you know, t to the fourth for real values of t is always going to be greater or equal to zero. So this is always positive, which indicates f is always increasing. Okay, you can also find an x-intercept for this graph because if you set the f equal to zero, you're going to get t, comma, t to the fourth plus one equals zero. And from here, you can safely say that t equals zero is an x-intercept, which is also a y-intercept. In other words, the graph goes through the origin. There are no other x-intercepts, but that doesn't mean there are no uh, other real roots, right? Okay, great. So uh, let's go ahead and use this idea. So what is that supposed to mean? So you have a function that is always increasing. So if you think about the the x to the fifth plus x value, which is f of x, and then that is equal to f of y, right? Based on the function we defined as f of t. So you have two points whose outputs are the same. So you kind of have like two inputs that whose outputs are the same, which means, and if you have like an always increasing function, I'm just graphing it for fun, it's not the graph. I'll show you the graph later on. But you, this basically means like if you get a y value, that is the same with another y value that has to correspond to a single x value. In other words, if you have a one-to-one -one function, which is one-to-one -one because f is always increasing, therefore, we could also call it a bijection, by the way, this implies x equals y. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is awesome, actually. So from a complex result or complicated result, we get something super duper simple. And that's nice because x equals y indicates that I can replace y with x. So I get x plus x equals 5, which means 2x equals 5, which means x equals 5 halves. And of course, x and y are equal. y is also 5 halves, but who cares about y, right? Well, you may care about y. We found the x values by using all from alpha and... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, I think it's going to be in one hour. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.